Ladies and gentlemen, in the background, the Ruffles and Flourishes States. being presented at John F. Kennedy Stadium because the arrival now of the President of the United States. President Ford, having just arrived at nearby International Airport here in Philadelphia by helicopter from Washington, D.C., attending the 75th, the Diamond Anniversary Game. A former University of Michigan football player out here on a beautiful day where the temperature is about 39 degrees, lots of sunshine, and of course, a capacity crowd. The last president to attend an Army-Navy game was President John F. Kennedy in 1962. Navy won it 34 to 14. And prior to that, in 1952, President Harry S. Truman, Navy winning seven to nothing. And now our national anthem. at the brigade of midshipmen, some 4,200 strong, numerically even with the corps of cadets from the Hudson. They too with a membership of 4,200. And today, as they have for the past two years, are playing for the Commander-in-Chief Trophy. Won initially by Army, last year by Navy, in a humiliating 51 to nothing defeat of Army. So. It's up for grabs again today, and appropriately, the President of the United States, Gerald Ford, is here to watch the game, to participate in the toss of the coin, and let's see if we can... There's the Tails toss. is called. It is a tails. It's your choice, sir. You'll take the ball. Which end do you wish to defend, Captain? You want to defend that way. Okay, fine. Well, this direction. Good luck, President. Good luck, Good luck here now the brave old army team three victories seven defeats the co-captains for the navy down on the field with the president cliff collier and tim harden captain for army the non-playing bob johnson in the dark blue jerseys those football players from the united states naval academy and today we're proud to have the head coach of the United States Air Force Academy, Coach Ben Martin, with us. And on the far side of the field, Army makes its appearance. Coached by first-year head coach Homer Smith, whereas George Welch, the coach of the midshipmen, is in his second year. So we're moments away now for more pageantry and the opening kickoff of this battle. I'm Chris Schenkel here in South Philadelphia with a native, a man who graduated from the United States Naval Academy, 17 years head coach of the United States Air Force Academy, Ben Martin. Ben, you won and lost to these two teams. Yes. What do you expect? I think it's going to be a terrific game. I can already feel it right in the middle of my stomach. It's the same old feeling we've had so many times, and, and I think this is going to be a classic. 
I don't think I've got as many goosebumps in any uh, sporting event. I get the same type as I get when we cover the Olympic Games, wherever they are, because this has all the coloury, the color, the pageantry, the excitement, and today in particular with President Ford here in a perfect day as we now get ready for the kickoff here at JFK Stadium. 74 years they've played the game, and kicking off is Navy Steve Dykes, and getting the ball is one of the great ones, Marcus Hardy of the Army, and Hardy is nailed at the six. A beautiful kick coverage by... That was Durwood C. Curtis, number 32 of Navy that came down. Ben, that was a great, effective kick coverage by the Navy. It certainly was. And you know, Army has the reputation of running back kickoffs. At that time, they deviated from their center return and tried to sideline her, and the Navy was ready for it, surprisingly so. All right, Army in the backfield. Bill Ogley, number 14, the quarterback. Dudrill, number 37, 45, Hardy, and Spangley, 44. So they try to bring it out from deep in their own court backfield. And here are the Army men. The quarterback, Scott Gallobly, number 14. Brad Dodrill, number 37, a junior. There is Spengler, the fullback, the junior, number 44. And number 45 is the boy who returned the kick, Marcus Hardy. So now, with the ball at the nine, it's a second down and seven for the Black Knights of the Hudson. Now the Navy defense, Marcus Hardy, number 45, across the 10, and let's see where the referee, Samuel J. Winterberg, has spotted the ball as Jeff Hoogler, number 60, the middle guard, made the stop for Navy at the 12. So with a three-yard gain, it's a third down and four, and Ben Martin of the Air Force, a uh, big play. They need it here, Chris. They're backed up, uh, and they're going to be kicking out against that wind. It doesn't seem like much of a problem, but there's no doubt it will be. Something uh, we have been informed uh, is not working right with the timer, and uh, the referee uh, has come over here, Samuel J. Winterberg, clock operator, George J. Becker, the field judge, Joseph Brownlee, the lineman, James A. Warner, the umpire, Ernest T. Colano. And we have reserve officials here, Thomas J. Elliott and Edward J. Mears, Jr. That's the importance of this game. And Coach Ben Martin knows the importance because he's had all that service academy experience, Ben, as a player and uh, as a coach. Yeah, right. You know, nearly in a case like this, they'll keep the uh, time right on the field, Chris. Uh, the clock will not be official until they get it started. It's critical, but not in this time of the game. It's early yet. But that position on the field is critical, I'll tell you. Uh, uh, Navy's really going to try to keep him back in there. The Army has to come up with a big play now on third down. We're looking at Army in the huddle now as Army has reached their own 12 with a third down and about four. This is the first series of downs. And uh, incidentally, on that toss of the coin, it was a commemorative coin, which uh, later will be presented to the president. As you look at Army's record, it's identical to Navy's. Three wins, seven losses. Army defeated Lafayette, Holy Cross, and, well, we hate to say oh. it with the coach here, the Air Force, but a squeaker, 17-16. But, Ben, you did defeat Navy. Yes, we had a tremendous game with both of these schools out there. Uh, we're lucky to win on a field goal in the last eight seconds against Navy, and we lost on a field goal in the last 17 seconds to Army. So uh, we have the same kind of troops as they do. It's just a matter of the emotion in this game is going to be the differential. And that emotion you were talking about, Ben, started long before the kickoff. Oh, it certainly did, <laughs> like about a week ago, and then they came out on the field today. Everybody's really fired up, and, and the, uh, the Corps of Cadets and the Brigade of Mitchell and uh, marched with pride. Uh, a tremendous pregame spectacle. I think that everyone is involved in this, and not only the players, uh, but their student bodies, but everybody that ever was in the Army and Navy uh, really feels this. It's kind of a gut reaction to a battle. They apparently are having electrical trouble with the clock high above the stands here, so the clock, as uh, always is done, will be kept on the field and will have to be informed by uh, the timers down there on what is happening. So this is the third play, third and four, and did they get enough? It's going to be very, very close in the first series of downs because Navy kicked off to Army. Army in the white jerseys, Dan Spangler moving the ball, and it's a first and ten for the cadets. 
Well, they really came up with it and they gave it to the first man through instead of the counter play and I think the Navy was a little bit fooled on that one. 31, uh, the end, the split end, John Hodges to the near side of the field. It's the wishbone in the backfield. First down from the 17. Trying to work the triple option, faking it into the belly of the fullback and Bill Ogley uh, met more than his match by co-captain Tim Harder, number 84, and number 55, Skip Lind. So uh, there's a loss of about a yard. We'll call it back to around the 16, so it'll be second down and 11. No score in the ball game. It's Army and White against Navy and Blue. Navy won last year, 51 to nothing. John Hodges now goes to the far side of the field on a second and 11. During the play, Brad Dodrill of Mount Gilead, Ohio. Practically every state represented on the two rosters because the game represents all parts of the United States of America. There's a close-up look at Brad Dodrill, who carried the ball and advances out to about the 19, a three-yard gain. It's third down and eight. No Here score. Another, here we go. Another one of the third down is Biz deep in their own territory. They're one for one. This is the first series of downs following the opening kickoff. And the Navy defense met the challenge. Dan Spangler, number 44. The fullback trying to push through, but Dave Papak of Monongahela, Pennsylvania did his job, so now it's going to be a fourth down. Fourth down and about eight. And back to punt is Dave Kuppengardner. Number 95. Oh, we had a little illegal procedure. I think the offensive team from West Point were going to go on a quick count and uh, the left end jumped off. It won't really change the situation much. Just give them five yards more to punt. You're listening to the voice of Coach Ben Martin, Martin of the United States Air Force Academy. Later you'll hear from our colleague Bill Fleming, and Don Tollefson will be on the sideline as well. A procedure penalty just brings it back five yards. So now Dave Hoopengardner, you're looking at him right now. Robin Amin, number 80, is in single safety, shielding his eyes because he's looking into a very bright sun here in South Philadelphia. May have its effect. Here's Hoopengardner's kick. Nearly blocked, and it's coming to the near sideline. It is not a very long kick. In fact, it went only 20 yards, and the midshipmen of Annapolis now have great field position as they snap the ball for the first time. Carl Willis was the man that put the rush on the punter. We'll be back. We're back again in Philadelphia for the 75th Army-Navy game. Army was forced to punt. It went only 20 yards. As a result, the midshipmen of the Navy have a first and 10 at the 33. Freshman Mike Roban of Great Falls, Montana, is the quarterback at his own 33. And they gain yardage. The fullback, another first-year man, Gary Goodwin, number 43. Up front, we have Owens, 34. Seward, 73. Collier, Reed, Driscoll. Kleckler and Woolley. Those are the men that will be up blocking or catching passes, two of them, for the backfield, which includes Cooper, a great one, number 25, Jackson 38, and Goodwin 43. So now it's a second down and eight from the 30. That was Cleveland Cooper, tackled by Mark Smith, the defensive left tackle from Fresno, California, number 93. Let's take a look at the portraits of the backfield men. Number 15, freshman Mike Roban. This is uh, number 80, A. Main, the junior. Now we're looking at Goodwin, number 43, the fullback. And here is Cleveland Cooper, who has broken all records at the Naval Academy. So now with a third down and five, another test, first one for Navy. No score in the game. Let's watch. He departed from the field too soon, Roban. And Mark Smith, number 93, who now has two fine defensive plays, did his duty. Chris, you know they come out in a power eye, which is a little uh, innovation for George Wilson's Navy team. And then they use the motion uh, to put their uh, tail back out there in that strong side flat. Uh, so, uh, but it, it wasn't effective. Army didn't seem to be surprised. 
We're going to have a field goal now by Steve Dykes, number 91. The point is the 35 plus the 10 of the end zone. He has a following wind of 16 miles an hour, so it's a 45-yard attempt. Here it is. It's up. It's long enough. After only a few minutes of play, stalled at the 28, the midshipmen have just kicked a 45 yard field goal and quickly take a 3 to nothing lead. And of course the Brigade of Midshipmen are mighty happen, happy, and football, Ben Martin, we always know, is a game of inches, and it just got over that crossbar. They did. Uh, it was kind of a, a belly shot that didn't get airborne too much, but it had a lot of power behind it, and the wind helped, so they got the three-pointer. Steve Dykes, who kicked a 48-yarder this year against Notre Dame, just booted a 45-yard field goal. It's 3 to nothing, and Dykes, who uh, put the three points on the scoreboard for Navy, Marcus Hardy is deep. It's Hardy at the 5, 10, 15 for Army. Coming out to the 20 and drawing a crowd at the 23. A 21-yard return, and he's been averaging that this year, returning kicks. One of the leaders in the country, so we'll be seeing him throughout the afternoon as now the cadets of Army have the ball at about the 23 with a first and 10. So they have their deepest penetration following the return. Let's see what they can do, trailing nothing to three. Ooh, Galogli trying to ooh, pass off lateral back off the triple option wishbone. Ooh, that makes your heart stop. That was something else. The defensive end for Navy just went right across and took away the pitch out, and Galogli didn't see him there. He was almost pitching to the Navy troop on that play. That is a loss of eight yards. It's second down and 18 as Navy leads three to nothing. Marcus Hardy alertly got over that ball, number 45, who is one of the halfbacks. The other is Dodrill. The fullback of the wishbone is 44 Spangler. Globally, the quarterback, number 14 Hodges, set to this side, and they go into a single setback formation. Globally brings it out to the 20 for a five-yard gain, and Chet Muller, number 48 from Kettering, Ohio, a junior, the Roverback, made the stop. Let's right. see this play again. This is Chet Moeller, the Roverback for uh, Navy. He's perhaps a leader in that defensive set, and he is really tough. He's a skinny kid, but he's very aggressive. He comes up on Galogli and makes a stop. Great open field tackle by Chet Moeller. Now it's back to the wishbone. A split end to the far side is Hodges. Daly in the slot on third and 13. is not doing too well as Andy Bushak, number 50 of Parma, Ohio, came in to force Army to punt. Yes, uh, Bushak is a big kid. He's 6'4", 235, and really has the strength to move, and he really complements that defense on a weak side. Super player. Now it's the second punt for Dave Hoopengardner. And again, looking into the sun, is Robin Amin. This time, Hoopengardner gets one high on the air. Going for a fair catch was a main number 80. And now Navy will start from its own territory, from their own 41. There's no score in the game. And after only a rather three to nothing. <laughs> Informed that we have eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter as the clock high above the stands here at JFK Stadium is inoperative. And as always, the time is kept on the field, so that official is relaying it to one of our men. So now, with Navy leading 3 to nothing, they start again from their own 41 with a first and 10. Cleveland Cooper, number 25, who is one of the few players on either team that can bust one, should he get a step on the defense, goes outside, is stopped by Greg Dyson, number 51 of Wharton, New Jersey. There we look at Cleveland Cooper, and you know all about him, Ben Martin. Oh, he's a, really a quick runner. He's a leading ground gainer, a record setter, and I, he just needs a little crack at daylight, especially on that sprint draw, and he's around the corner. 45-yard field goal by Navy. Puts them on top, three to nothing, second and five. Bob Jackson, number 38. 
a New Jersey native, carried on the play. Here again, they're in that power eye set, which is something that George Ross has used very sparingly during the year, but it seems to be the basis for their attack plan today. They've had 14 plays so far and haven't thrown a pass, so I guess they're trying to establish something along that line of scrimmage. They should do like the Air Force does, go to the air. <laughs> we have to in desperation sometimes. They should here too, I think. It's third down and four. very close for the first down by Mike Roban of Great Falls, Montana, the freshman quarterback, as Dave Duncavage, who made the stop. We have a replay of his defensive work. Yeah, no, Duncavage is playing the left side linebacker, number 54, on the left side of your screen. Uh, he's really a good troop, and uh, he's a, a very short tackler. Uh, he reads those keys very nicely and comes up to make the stop. They did not make the first down, so it's a fourth down and less than a yard. And John Stufflebeam, two punters have long names. Oh, Open this Gardner and Stufflebeam. Oh, John Stufflebeam is a terrific punter, very consistent, stylish. 40.8 yard average. And back is Gary Smithy and a loose ball. And maybe gets the first break of the ball game. The midshipmen have the ball inside the Army 15. Recovering was number 89, Carl Sharperson, a wide receiver. Now watch. Here comes the kick. It's a low liner. It should be handled, but uh, it went right through, and the Navy had the good coverage down there, so they had the ball. All right, at the 13-yard line of Army, first and 10, Navy. Navy leading 3 to nothing. Roban. A slight penetration made by Gary Goodwin of Flint, Michigan, the freshman fullback, 5'10", 193. And in on the play, Rick Conniff, the middle guard, number 91, and the defensive left tackle, Mark Smith. Chris Conniff. Army has been very tough down inside the 10-yard line. Uh, they really dig in. They, they stopped us on the 2-yard line. You know, goal line stands are kind of a rarity in football today, but uh, this Army team is really tough when they get down inside there. Well, the nation's oldest service academy. Army is being tested on a 2nd and 7 now. Cooper. Dyson. Moving over to make the stop. Army and White, if you just joined us, Navy and uh, the Duck jerseys here at JFK Stadium, and about four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Here we have that Army defense digging in. Here comes a blitz up through there, pressure from the defensive secondary to, to make them turn up inside. They wanted to turn the corner. Navy leads three to nothing, and now they have a third down and three at the Army six. Cooper. And denied. That brings up. You see it's very, very close to that forward stake. Let's watch the referee, Sam Winterberg, Chuck Baker, and Greg Dyson defensively, 82 and 51. And here comes the first measurement of the ball game. You know, they did the smart thing. They tested the inside and nothing there, so they sweep right and then they come back and sweep left. Uh, I think that was a good tactical move to get away from that tough defense. First and goal for Navy. Ball is right at the half mark, the three. You just joined us, a 45-yard field goal was kicked by Navy at about the midpoint of the first quarter, and they have a three-to-nothing lead, but now threatening. That is the initial Navy first down. They started this drive at their own 41. They're now at the Army three. Touchdown, Navy, Bob Jackson. So the native of Lindenwald, New Jersey, a junior number 38, Bob Jackson, has gone in for six points. Navy goes out in front, nine to nothing on the scoreboard. They have ten up. They haven't kicked the extra point yet, but Steve Dykes, who kicked the 45-yard field goal, has Mike Yeager holding. And here's the try for the extra point. Good, ten to nothing. United States Naval Academy from Annapolis. So, 
late here in the first quarter. We'll take a pause for this message. Number 91, Steve Dykes teeing up the ball. The drive, scoring drive by Navy, 13 yards, following a punt, which was recovered as we look at Billy the Goat, number 19, given to the Academy by the class of 1927, which included Tom Hamilton. Marcus Hardy, number 45, back in his own end zone. And right now, for the first time today, we welcome to Philadelphia our colleague, Bill Fleming. Chris, thank you very much. As you mentioned earlier, the President of the United States, Gerald Ford, is here and did flip the coin at the center of the field to begin the game. That coin, a beautiful gold mounted on platinum, will be given to him at halftime. And we will be here, hopefully, when he comes to this side of the field to sit with the Army cadets during the second half, we'll have a chance to talk with him. As you know, of course, he was a former football great at the University of Michigan and is very knowledgeable about the game. Back up to you, Chris. Okay, it's 10 to nothing. Navy Army with the ball at their own 20 with a first down. It was Golobly, the quarterback, giving to 44, Dan Spangler of Sydney, Ohio, as President Ford with the sunglasses bundled up on this day that has a temperature reading of 39 degrees. And with... Uh, Many admirals. At this moment, he'll be joining generals and and uh, the cadets, the corps of cadets, after the first half. So with the ball out of the 25, it's a second and five. Army. And carrying on the play, Gilogli, number 14 of East Aurora, New York. Skip Lind made the tackle for Navy. Navy in the dark jerseys. We're now looking at the Army offensive huddle. Army team that scored 42 points like last week in North Carolina, losing, however, 56 to 42. Army's in a too tight end attack right now, uh, Chris. They got them all bunched in there, trying to establish some power to get out of their own backyard. But now it's fourth down and one. Third down, rather, and one. Gilogli gets the first down. That was the 22nd play in the football game here in the first quarter, and we're still looking for the first forward pass. Joe Arenio and Bob Caslin locked to get help get that first down, which is now, the ball is now at the 34 of Army. First and 10, globally the quarterback. He's a junior. Marcus Hardy. And Navy has had uh, their emotions lifted by the fact that they had a 45-yard field goal and then scored. Go Chet Moeller, the rover back. He's now playing corner because of the two tight ends, but he can really find that football, and he stings the ball carrier every time he gets near him. So for Army and White, it's second down and nine at the 35. Still waiting for another time report as the clock on the field is not operating. Globally. Gets it off at the last moment to 37 Dodro. So he gets across the 35. That was the second and nine play. Chet Moeller again, number 48, Kettering, Ohio. Makes the stop this time at the 37, which brings up a third down and seven for the cadets. Navy leading 10 to nothing. Chris, uh, Navy's really crowding that line of scrimmage in this punched up formation. They're going to have to loosen them up a little bit. All right, third and seven. Here's the first pass. Oh, it was way too long. Overshot the receiver and uh, a safety man named Gene Ford of Louisville, Kentucky. Nearly had it. Let's see it again. They come off the fake in the bone. Uh, it's a pop pass from deep. Uh, one receiver out, uh, but uh, the ball was not on the target. All right. Now it's Dave Hoopengardner. There's a great shot of him. Amin is deep. Again, looking into the sun. Nearly blocked. And a fair catch called for by a man up front, Chip Moeller who has been that rover defensively. Moeller calls for the fair catch. So Navy, as they did uh, on the last series, are right near their own 41. A 23-yard punt. Skip Wynn nearly blocked the ball. Navy scored after punting to Army. Recovered a fumble at the 13. And in the fourth play, went in on a first and goal. Plus the 45-yard field goal. So let's watch the midshipmen now at about their own 40. Cleveland Cooper carries on the play. He's from Rochester, New York. 
one of ten brothers and sisters, President Ford, watching on the Navy side the first half. That was a trap by the first trap we've seen today, uh, Chris. Uh, they almost popped it, too. That's the kind of a thing that Cleveland Cooper can go all the way on if they set that up properly. Two minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the first quarter. We've just been informed. Navy leading 10 to nothing. Second and five. Nice hole. Jerry Godwin. Number 43 of Flint, Michigan. Gets the first down for the Middies. Cliff Collier, the co-captain and left guard, blocking beautifully up front. The Navy now has worked its way into Army, ter Army territory for the first time. They recovered a punt in Army territory, a fumbled punt, and then went on to score. So let's watch him now from the 48 of Army. Mike Roban, the freshman, the slick ball handler, getting it into the midriff of Goodwin, the fullback, in a hurry. Oh, he looks good for a first-year man. He sure does, and they put him at fullback, and he has that quick start. He really gets out of there. Navy now has sneaked into an unbalanced line. Uh, they're, they're doing a few subtle things here to try to feel out that defense. Uh, they're going to be probing for a little bit longer, and then they're really going to turn it loose, which is what Army's been doing to them, too. And it's traditional in this Army-Navy game to come up with new wrinkles. Yes, it is every year, and there's the unbalanced feed. Cleveland Cooper coming outside showing you some of his early speed and I wouldn't be surprised if sometime today he's going to bust a long one. Yeah, he has that capacity no doubt about it. Cleveland Cooper is a great runner, has uh, good daylight moves and uh, once he gets out in the open he can run away from people. In 72 he gained 1,046 yards, last year 898 and coming into this game 533. It's a third down and two. Cooper now, six carries, 27 yards. The ball is at the 40 of Army. Navy leads 10 to nothing. And bowing for the first down is Bob Jackson, number 38, and Chuck Baker was one of the Army defensemen who made the stop. Former Michigan football player, President Gerald Ford, on Thanksgiving Day, the White House entertained his 1930 high school teammates called the 3030 Club for the Thanksgiving Day brunch. That's beautiful. That's Isn't what it's all about. The Navy went back to their balanced attack then, even though they're on a hash mark, uh, they're in a balanced attack again. With a, but they got that power eye set there, and they do have some power generated. And now they have reached the Army 37 with a first and 10, leading 10 to nothing. We're in the first quarter, the waning moments. Beautiful late pitch to Cleveland Cooper, who did a spin and moved inside the 30. Al Stuhlmiller of Dunkirk, New York, number 32, and Al Starkel were in on the play. Starkel from Enid, Oklahoma. So, we have 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and Navy has gained a 10 to nothing lead on a 45 yard field goal and a touchdown from the three following a recovery of a army fumble. Amin is off to the left on a second down and two. And Navy throws its first pass. Amin was the intended receiver. And number 32, Stuhl Miller, jolted him pretty good. Yeah, he certainly did. Yeah, you see that Mike Roban up close. Uh, this is Robin Amin, of course, who is the number one pass catcher. Uh, a swifty, good feet, knows how to read those defenses, uh, whether they're zone or man, gets open quite frequently. He's got 26 passes this year, and uh, he's scored two touchdowns. Average is about 20 yards a catch. Now it's a third down and two. Final seconds of the first quarter. Go back. Back to Megan Gilmore. Ed Gilmore, number 22 of Long Branch, New Jersey. Carried to the outside and gets the first down, and the gun has sounded. 
No, it has not. That was just some of the hijinks, some of the antics that go with the game. Looking at a clock now that is operative. The seconds, the last two have ticked off. And the first quarter has ended with uh, the men from Annapolis leading the men from West Point by a score of 10 to nothing. We'll be back in a minute. The first snap of the second quarter will come from the Army 18. Navy in the dark jerseys will be snapping it. They gained a first and ten on the last play of the first quarter. They lead Army by a score of ten to nothing. So, Navy up to the line. Roban is the quarterback. Amin off to the near side of the field. And Roban getting outside, and Coach Ben Martin, a look now at the first quarter statistics. Well, the name of the game uh, statistically is uh, actually Navy has uh, has it all gone from them with 59 yards total, 24. No passes being completed is a big difference. I thought we'd have a little of that, but I think the big difference in the stats is where Navy started their drives and where Army started them. Uh, Navy had all the field position in the first quarter. All right, this is a drive that started at the Navy 40, and this is the ninth play of the drive, second and five at the 13. Marker down as Ed Gilmore goes across, but let's see, there may be a shift penalty. That's a legal procedure, I'm sure, uh, against Navy. Everybody was moving around. Referee Samuel Winterberg, let's see if he throws that, that sign again. Navy in the lead by a score of 10 to nothing, 14 minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And we're glad that there is a clock operating here at JFK Stadium. <laughs> All right, that was shift penalty. Now let's go down to our colleague Don Tollefson. There have been many great hijinks involved in the Army-Navy game over the year, but the real Academy Award winner occurred in 1971. It had been rumored all week before that game that President Nixon or Vice President Agnew might show up. Shortly before the game, a limousine, surrounded by security men, enters the stadium. The Corps of Cadets stood and saluted, and finally the limo stopped in front of the midshipmen. An outstep, guess who? The Navy go. But Army got the last laugh. They won that game 24 to 23. Chris? All right, thank you very much, Don Tollison. We're going to uh, have a replay of the down, and it'll bring up second down and 10 from the 18. And, of course, following this game, we'll have an abbreviated version of ABC's Wide World of Sports, but one of the most beautiful events, international figure skating from Madison Square Garden, a benefit event for the United States Olympic Committee. And then, coming up from the Los Angeles Coliseum at... 5 Eastern time will be the Notre Dame-Southern California game, Ben Martin. Oh, that's going to be a super game. Of course, we uh, had the pleasure, I use the word loosely, of playing uh, Harris' <laughs> team in South Bend, and they're very powerful, but Johnny McKay's team has come along well at the end of the season. It's going to be a real ding-dong battle. Here is George Welch. Yeah, George, I coached him when he was a midshipman a long, long time ago. He was a fine player, wasn't he? Yes, he was. A great quarterback. Second and ten. Woo! Got Jackson in motion. Navy with the ball. Just over the fingertips of Robin Amin from Midwest City, Oklahoma, number 80. It'll bring up a third down and 10 here in the opening minute of the second quarter. And if you just joined us, yes, this is the game. Army, Navy, a 45-yard field goal by Dykes. In the first quarter, put Navy ahead three to nothing. They, Navy recovered a punt by Army and went 13 yards in four plays to score. The extra point was good. It's 10 zip. Amin now to the far side in a power eye formation. Third down and 10. Ooh, that was close. Wasn't that close? Great deal of pressure on the passer. Number 86, and on the field, Ben, we have two players named Ford. This was Stan Ford. Well, in the stands, President Gerald Ford watches. Kanef made uh, the tackle on the quarterback, Roban. He's oh. a good nose guard, really good. So the ball is back at the 18. What is a forward pass incomplete. So now here is a 35-yard field goal attempt by Steve Dykes, who kicked a 45-yarder earlier, but this one is into the wind, and that does make a difference. No good. It's about a 16-mile-an-hour wind coming from out of the left. Gary Smithy fielded the ball, and we'll be back with the Army play in a moment. 
there you see the statistics, Ben Martin, Army, Navy. Yes, not a, not a lot of offense, but Navy's taking advantage of their great field position to get their points on the board. Army has yet to get it out where they can do anything, and I'm sure they're going to, in this particular series, open up, change their sets, and, uh, and really attack. All right, following a missed 35-yard field goal, it's a first and 10 for Army at their own 20. Their deepest penetration has been their own 37 in three possessions. Spangler, number 44, carried on the play from Gologli. Let's get down the sideline again, Don. One of the great parts of the Army-Navy game is the great support the cadets and midshipmen give their teams. Back in 1944, when our guest commentator Ben Martin was playing for Navy, his roommate rooted against him. Students couldn't travel to away games in those days because of World War II. So when Martin was playing, his roomie was a turncoat midi, ordered to root for the cadets. Needless to say, it's tough to win when your roomie's against you. And Army won that game 23-7. to Chris? On a second and six play, Marcus Hardy, number 45 of Lexington, Kentucky, carried on the play for two yards. Paypack 77 on the tackle. So it's going to be a third down and four for Army, which is yet to announce any kind of an attack here against the Navy defense. Let's see what they do here now. They send uh, Jancic, number 81, to the left side. In the backfield, the wishbone. Third and four. Good enough for the Army first down. It's going to be mighty close. Randy Hutcherson, number 41. I believe he made it, Chris. Good, good sp a scramble play. Another one-man pattern on third and long. Uh, normally when Homer Smith uh, wants to throw, he'll go to that spread formation with four quick receivers, but uh, that time he decided to go with a one-man pattern. Nice five-yard game by Gologli in a first down at his own 31. Maybe he's in the lead. 10 to nothing. 12-37 remaining in the first half. The ends are tight. From the wishbone. Ooh. Apex. 77, look at him. He was there. Well, Spangler, was there. 44. And even Chet Muller come in and knock down the referee. He wanted to get in on the action. Uh, he's a real aggressive player. He uh, is 6'3", 234, a junior from Monongahela, Pennsylvania, on the banks of the river where we did a game on Thursday night with Bo Schembechler. Yes, I know you did. Bo did a great job. Good and, good and Bo and Ben Martin are going to be the coaches of this year's East-West game on the coast. So Golovly nearly comes out for their deepest penetration is Andy Bushack, number 50 of Parma, Ohio, comes in to make the tackle, and it's at just short of the third. We're watching Chet Muller again, the rover back for Navy. He's playing the corner spot here. He comes up, reads the option well. He does a super job. He's really got the pitch, and then he has to turn back in and help on the quarterback. So now we have a third down and six. Johnny Hodges, 31, split to the left side. Get him! What a play. Marcus Hardy, number 45, the sophomore, comes out up near the front stake. The linesman on the far side of the field with his chain crew as Andy Bushack again defensively joined by Skip Lind. One thing you have to be with the wishbone, and I think the Army team is picking that up from Coach Homer Smith and the staff, is you must be patient. There are base plays, and then you counter them along the way. But Scott Gologli is doing a super job, and then in the last game against North Carolina, he really uh, executed the wishbone the way it should be done. And I think uh, they're going to pick up the pace here quite a bit soon, right now. Yeah, they got it. Marcus Hardy from Lexington, Kentucky, shaken up a bit on that last play. And now he's being aided, assisted off to the far sideline. And in his place will be Bob Simons, number 34, a senior from Brooklyn, New York. Four first downs each team. Each team with three victories, seven losses. The records don't mean a thing when they come into this game. They certainly don't, Chris. Everything's out the window. They're all the same type of young man. They all want to win so badly. They're going to try their best. The intensity level is really way up there. A new split end, Howie Williams to the far side, number 89. Pitch goes to 37, Godreau. And Army has gone into Navy territory for the first time. And a beautiful block by number 34, Bob Simon. 17-yard gainer for the cadets. 
So the ball is now at the Navy 41. That's the lead option where they get a fell out in front to block the man who's forcing from the secondary, and they executed that one perfectly. The block at the perimeter was just fabulous. Up until that play, their longest game was seven. Well, they picked up a beauty there for a first down at the Navy 41. Navy leading 10 to nothing. Army with the ball. And busting is Dan, Dan Spangler, number 44. Ken Lipo and Jerry Arenio of Union, New Jersey, and Cicero, Illinois, Lipo, made the hole, and now Army has moved down near the 31 of the midshipmen. I think they're going to have a measurement. Of course, they went back to what uh, Coach Royal used to call a chain rattler that time. They gave that ball inside the fullback, and what he's supposed to do is get that tough yardage for the first down. I think he just missed it. Yes, by less than a yard. And speaking of Coach Royal, his Longhorns yesterday here on ABC Television did quite a job. Well, they started off fast and increased the pace with every opportunity. That was a great win for Darrell. And, of course, it means a lot to Baylor, too, because of the conference championships. And, of course, it'll be the University of Texas against Auburn, December 30th, the night of the 30th, in uh, beautiful Jacksonville, Florida, the Gator Bowl, right here on ABC. We have a pair of tight ends, Daly, 83, and Jancic, 81, because they need some blocking. It's uh, a second down and less than a yard for Army with Navy in the lead. Ten to a procedure penalty. So Army's had a little trouble. They've had a shift called against them, a double shift as a matter of fact, two of the backs. And now the procedure, which brings the ball back five yards to about the 36, and it'll be a second down and six. Howie Williams, number 89, to the near side of the field. Spangler and it's an army first down and the Corps of Cadets here at JFK Stadium Philadelphia loving it and we're enjoying the comments of Coach Ben Martin of the United States Air Force Academy typical classic it really is uh, the fundamental skills and the hitting along that line of scrimmage are just great to watch okay back to the game from the 29 now of Navy it's a first and ten for the cadets. Navy in the lead, ten to nothing. A beautiful second effort by the quarterback, Scott Gologli. Number 14 is Publer. Number 60 made the stop. Here's Don Tollison. One of Navy's defensive standouts, left him, Tim Harden, has suffered a possible fracture of his right wrist. Doesn't look like he'll be able to play anymore this afternoon. Chris? Oh, that's... Sorry to hear that. It's really tough when a kid's playing a game like this to be injured so he can't return. 89, Howie Williams at the bottom of your screen. The split in second and four. Oh, dangerous. Gallogly over the ball. I'll tell you, the defensive end just came right across to deny that pitch, and uh, that's the way they're playing that thing. Watch. Scott Galugli coming right off the classic triple option with the fake to the fullback comes out here. That's not a loaded one this time, so the end who's taken away the pitch is right there. No one to block him. Same thing that happened earlier in the game. They're really defending that pitch out. Well, Army has had the ball for 47 yards, 11 plays, with a third and 14 now. First down. There he is, number 45, Marcus Hardy, carrying for the cadets. He's their number two rusher. He's caught a pass. Now, this is the counter play. When you're flowing too fast with the option, they come back with a counter. It's a crisscross and a give to the halfback from the far side. He just runs to daylight. This time, Marcus Hardy doesn't find much, has to go all the way around the end. They gained seven, so it's fourth down and seven. With eight minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the first half, John Hodges, 41, is in, and they go for it on fourth down. Hello, boy. The spirit of Army. They really are. they got to get it in there. No way to go. Not that way. And the Navy's Chet Muller sinks the Army on that play. I'll tell you, if you're going to... 
Let's watch Moeller again. If you're going to go for it, I'd stay away from Chet Moeller. He is really a ball hawk. You run away from this fellow, number 48. He comes across, attacks the quarterback, drives him deep, spins him, gives him no opportunity to pitch out at all. Great play on the defense. His father, a basketball player and gymnast at the University of Cincinnati. So it's bred into him a little athletic ability. Oh, he's very aggressive. And I think the thing we respect most about Chet Bowler is the fact that uh, he not only carries out his responsibility, but he'll cover for those other mistakes up front. Well, it's first and ten now for Navy. Getting the ball on downs on a fourth and seven. Doing a beautiful job defensively. So now they split the uh, flanker back. Amin out to the near side of the field. Let's see what the freshman Mike Wilfan will do on first down, leading 10 to nothing. And that's what we mean about Cleveland Cooper of the United States Naval Academy. Joe Clancy, number 29, forcing Cooper out of bounds after an 18 yard gain and a first down at the Army 47. That looked like the old uh, student body left play. They were in a power set, and everybody came out there. They had a couple of linemen, the fullback, the tailback, and the Cleveland Cooper with his really fast feet. Cleveland Cooper in three seasons. He's never missed a game. This is his 33rd straight for Navy. Now it's a first and 10 at the Army, 47. They, the Navy leading 10 to nothing. 8.26 to go, first half. Gary Goodwin, the freshman fullback, top one to about the 32, 16 yards. That guy is really quick. We experienced that when we played against him. He just comes off the ball so fast, and he really has a dimension they hadn't had before. A freshman going straight ahead that rapidly. All right, Amin trotting off here at the bottom left of your screen is the flanker. It's a first and ten for Navy at the Army 32. Cooper. And Cooper goes deeper. Across the 25. Doug Cavage, the linebacker, number 54 of Trumbull, Connecticut, was in on the tackle. And the brigade of midshipmen have dropped their hats often this afternoon. They certainly have. It's getting more and more exciting. I think the Navy speed to the outside is starting to tell a little bit now. And uh, they're really loosening up the uh, cadets' defense. It's a basic 5 2, but it's being spread a little thin. Amin to the far side. It's a second down and three for Navy at the Army 25. Navy leading 10 to nothing, second quarter. First down by Goodwin, number 43. He gets to about the 15 of Army. Dyson, number 51, number 91. Kind of for Army on the tackle. A lot of speed. Real quick starts for everyone in that Navy background now. As we indicated, Navy won last year by a score of 51 to nothing. Their most important win this year was an upset over Penn State 7-6 to six. so the Navy Blue and Gold are showing their might here now in the second quarter with seven minutes approximately remaining with a first and ten now at the Army 15 they've gone 50 yards now in only four plays Cooper 25 and Conniff submarining in to make the stop but Cooper, number 25, in the dark jersey, coming back to the Navy huddle. You see him right there. And you're looking uh, at the Army bench. Not much to be roused about, but that can change in this classic. Amin now goes to the far side of the field. Second and eight from the 13 for Navy. Freshman Goodwin, number 43, is having. I think they're a little surprised with his quickness. He really darts through that line of scrimmage. Stan Ford, number 86, made a sure tackle after they finally got him stopped along with Al Starkel. So it's moving the ball to the six yard line, a gain of seven, which means about a third and one coming up. The Army's got their shock troops in there. They've got their down linemen in place of their linebackers. They're ready for that frontal assault. All right. Here comes third down and about one. Six points. Bob Jackson.
Jackson, number 38, goes six yards for a six-pointer. Now 16 to Navy. A 65-yard drive. In seven plays, with five minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the first half. A drive that consumed three minutes and five seconds on the clock. And Steve Dykes, who put the first points on the board, a 45-yard field goal, will now try for his second extra point. It's up. Good. So 528 left in the first half, and uh, the midshipmen have taken a 17 to nothing lead. All right, we're back again at JFK Stadium, and Navy favored by a little more than a touchdown, surprisingly have taken a 17 to nothing lead. They got their first on a break, picking up an Army fumble of a Navy punt, then went in uh, in four plays, 13 yards. And Bob Jackson, the junior tailback, has scored both touchdowns. He's from Lindenwald, New Jersey, and Navy now kicks off, leading 17 to nothing. Steve Dykes kicking. Marcus Hardy has the ball for Army. Marcus is brought down at the Army 24. 17-yard return, and let's go to Don Thomas. Army and Navy officers have always taken this game seriously, seriously, but back in the 1890s, things really got out of hand. A rear admiral and a brigadier general got in such an argument that they threatened to have a duel. When the Secretary of the War heard about it, he decided to call off the game for a period of six years. Tempers finally cooled, and they resumed the game in 1899. Chris? All right, not a game for the faint-hearted. First and 10 from the 24 for the cadets. And it was Dan Spangler, number 44, that carried on the play. Dan Spangler, the You just joined us, a 45-yard field goal by Dykes of Navy, put the midshipmen ahead. And then a 13-yard four-play drive following a fumbled punt recovery put them in, Bob Jackson doing it, and he did the last touchdown on the seventh play, having a 65-yard drive. So they beat 17 to nothing as second and eight now for the cadets. That was an unbalanced line again. They set the wide side of the field and ran toward the unbalanced. So it's a 21-yard gain as we look at Billy 19. Here's Don Collison. This is Bill the, Bill the 19th, who is Navy's mascot. He's been the mascot for the last two years. He was a reserve mascot for five years before he got the promotion. Goats have been Navy's mascot since the 1890s because they make great seagoing pets. They'll eat almost anything. All right. He serves as kind of First a coach for the Navy the team as well. He's always pointed towards the opponent's goal line in case the Navy quarterback forgets in which direction he's going. Chris? Okay. Spangler carrying on the play on a first and ten from his own 45, and he brings it out to the 48 as Paypack makes the tackle. One time, the Naval Academy had, other than goats as pets, they had a couple of dogs, a cat, even a bird. But what bird was that? I don't know about that one. Back before you were born. Not the falcon that you have now in Colorado Springs. Marcus Hardy. He needed seven yards on the play and uh, didn't quite get it, but to bring up the spirits of the cadets a little bit, they did get into Navy territory to, well, let's call it the 48. That's a nice play again, well executed. The uh, Navy is really forcing that pitch out, uh, not giving them a lot of room to cut up in there like they'd like to do. So with the ball at the Navy 48, Army with a third down and three. Hodges, split to the left. And the Navy defense, boy, they really bunch them up toward the line, don't they? Sure do. They, well, of course, the Army has only thrown that one pass, and so Navy's uh, playing the percentages. They have nine men almost on the line of scrimmage, so uh, Army's going to have to put that thing up in the air sooner or later. They normally do it from a spread formation, send in Lehman Hall, but I expect to see that very shortly. And on fourth down and one at the Navy 46, Dave Hoopengardner will punt. Back deep is Robin Amin. It's one that's hanging. Amin has it at the 14. 15, and he is brought down. Good kick coverage by the cadets. 33-yard punt. As we look at President Ford, we'll look at more football following this message as we take a pause in South Philadelphia. All right. 
This is the deepest point from which Navy has had to operate. At their own 14 with a first and 10, and they lead 17 to nothing. Roban giving to Goodwin. Goodwin's had quite a day, and he continues his fine offensive efforts from the fullback position. Chuck Baker and Starkel, 82 and 20, making the tackle for the Army defense. He's got something good going there, giving the ball to Goodwin. That sets up a lot of other things, and he's being very effective. He's breaking those tackles, making a lot of that on his own, just on those quick fullback slant plays. Navy needs one yard for a first down on second down. A means went to the far side. The power eye formation in the backfield behind the freshman Roban. Ahead of that forward stake goes Cleveland Cooper, number 25, the tailback. And once again, the unbalanced line attack, uh, both uh, sides showing that when they get the wide side of the field, they're utilizing all that space to give their back some running room. Cooper now 64 yards and 11 carries. And two new men coming under the Navy lineup, number 73, Randy Seward, and number 83, tight end Kevin Sullivan from Philadelphia. Chestnut Hill Academy product here in Philadelphia. 6'4", 201 pounds. Down to the 26, first and 10 for the Navy. Cleveland Cooper losing the handle. And number 93 says it's armies, but we'll have to wait for the official. Yeah, they all, uh, they all vote out there on whose ball it is, Chris. Uh, They untangle them, and it looks like the Navy still has that football. And the rotating of the arm means keep that clock going. So it's a second down, and uh, actually there was a four-yard gain despite losing the handle and coming back a bit. Cooper recovered his own fumble. Oh, he, he looks like a thoroughbred. He's a good one. Second down at six now. Navy leading 17 to nothing. We have a minute 32 to go in the first half. Tipped over an outstretched leg. So let's go to Don Tallison. This is the first season for Coach Homer Smith. The Man Army hopes will rebuild their football program. Last year, Smith was the offensive coordinator at UCLA when the Bruins were the top rushing team in the country. He played his college football at Princeton. He served as an assistant coach at Army and Stanford and as a head coach at Davidson Pacific before joining Pepper Rogers at UCLA in 72. When Rogers went to Georgia Tech this fall, Smith accepted the head job here at West Point. Chris? Okay, Don, following our Army-Navy telecast, Dave Dials in the Prudential College scoreboard. Dave really will keep you up to date, always does each week. And then at approximately 4.15, Ice skating featuring Janet Lynn and its charity uh, benefit performance at Madison Square Garden, which includes many of the international stars for the benefit of the United States Olympic Fund. Then at 5 Eastern Time from the Los Angeles Coliseum, Woody Hayes joins Keith Jackson to do commentary on the Southern California Notre Dame game. How do you think uh, Woody Hayes will do as a color commentator. Well, I, I'm sure, as you know, Chris, Woody's going to tell it like it is. Uh, whatever <laughs> he sees out there is going to be described in very accurate terms. Uh, I can hardly wait to hear him myself. Right. So that comes at 5 Eastern. All right, Amin flanked to the far side of the field for the power eye, third down at 7. Navy on third down is one of four. They lead, though. All right, Goodman carrying the ball. And he did not get the necessary yardage. There's a little sightseeing down there as though the ball had been fumbled, but apparently not. It is down at the 33, so there's a gain of four. It is fourth down and three. Army was in kind of a prevent defense then, expecting to lay it up in the, in the air, and uh, Navy crossed him up and went right at him with Goodwin, but it, it was not successful. So now we have a fourth down and three, and uh, Navy's... John Steppelbean will do the punting. And a moment ago, you saw Gary Smithy, number 26, in uh, single safety again, looking into a bright sun. This John Steppelbean is a super kicker. I guess Notre Dame, he had 10 kicks for a 53-yard average, which made a big difference in the contest. He could really kick the ball. Maybe leading 17 to nothing. Gary Reed snaps the ball. The kick is on its way. 
taking a Navy bounce, being protected by the midshipmen in the dark jerseys. And it's inside the 25 of Army, traveling 44 yards, 56 seconds left in the first half. Don? George, George Welsh, who is in his second season as Navy's head coach, is the first Naval Academy graduate to coach the midshipmen since 1947. He played at Navy during the 1950s, and he still ranks sixth on their all-time passing and total offense list. He was an assistant coach for 10 years at Penn State before coming to Annapolis. And while there, he coached such outstanding backs as Lydell Mitchell and John Huffnick. Chris? All right, Lehman Hall, the new quarterback, the freshman from a double-wing formation, puts one into the air. Lehman Hall, a freshman from a Popka, Florida, through one and caught by Chuck Tysing, the split end number 46. So Army coming in with a little razzle-dazzle now, and they have come up and marked with their first completion. Yes, they have, and this is uh, the way they do it. The format is to bring in Lehman Hall in their spread formation from the tees, a drop-back pass, a big, tall kid who has a nice delivery. Uh, Navy's gone into a prevent defense with just three up front, five short, and three deep, so I think they're in the defense to contain him, but he's going to make a few yards if he's on target. All right. It was an early indication of a first down, and then a measurement was called for. Tysing catching the pass, so now it's a second down and a little more than the length of a football. It is not a first down. From about the 34, Hall, six feet five. Oh, he's got one out there. But apparently in the wrong hands, and the Army would-be catcher tried to say there was interference, but Ed Jeter, number 19 of Memphis, Tennessee, intercepts. Here it goes again. Lehman Hall dropping back in the pocket. He's throwing a long one, a fly pattern way downfield, but that prevent defense that really has three safety men back there, that's really tough to throw deep against that kind of a zone. It was intended for Bob Woodcock. This is the second Army turnover. This time... Not as in dangerous as territory as the fumble punt, but it is at the 23 of Navy as the midshipmen lead 17 to nothing. 36 seconds remaining in the first half. Roban. Roban moving it from the 23 out to the 27 as Rick Caniff, number 91 of Winter Park, Florida, pushed him out of bounds. There he is, number 99, 91. Let's see him again. He's really good over the center as a nose guard. He's quick. He, he hits a good shot on the center. Then he finds the ball, pursues nicely. That's a good pursuit pattern down the line. Now he's got the cutoff angle right on Roman, and he gets him on a nice tackle from behind. Voice of Coach Ben Martin of the United States Air Force Academy, completing his 17th year as head coach. What a job he's done there. All right, Cleveland Cooper on a second and seven. He can move. He really can, and he got it out of bounds. He got it out of bounds. That's important. Stop that clock. Now they're getting closer to that midfield stripe. Don Mooney, 25, and Jeff Bruckner, number 61, stopped him and forced him out of bounds. It's a first and 10 at the 41 now. Cooper with 13 carries, 86 yards. Steve uh, Bear Illich of South Bend, Indiana, a junior, comes in at left tackle on the Navy offense, number 75. Mike Roban carrying, knifing off to the far side of the line as Dyson makes the stop, number 51, joined by Dunn Cavage. And on the field clock, 15 seconds in the first half. Here's a look uh, without the helmet of Mike Roban, number 15, from Great Falls, Montana. He's one of the very best uh, in the state of Montana. We knew a lot about him. Uh, he was the outstanding high school football player there. I think on that last play, however, Chris, that that was a broken play. He mishandled the ball. Uh, I'm sure they didn't want to sneak the ball at that point in time. They were set up to do something wider to throw it. But So they had to use one of their timeouts. Like the idea of freshmen playing? Yeah, I like it. If I had Mike Roban, I'd play him, too. Uh, I, I think it's a good scene. There are a great many talented young men in college now, and I think most of the coaches were surprised when so many freshmen made it and made it big, but uh, now they're, they're confident they can do it, and you see a kid like this really cool and poised in a great football game. Uh, uh, that's really a super effort by an 18-year-old young man. Coach Ben Martin. Ben, you're normally nestled at the 
foot, foot of the Rockies, and you know about ice skating, Colorado yes, Springs do. being a center. Janet Lynn appears right after our telecast today and a, and a benefit, and she's great. Beautiful young woman. Wide world sports, second and seven now from the 44. And even though he had that arm cocked, brought it back, and tried to get away, there was a tremendous army rush led by Ray Beverly, number 68 of San Antonio, Texas. As time runs out now, only six seconds left on the clock, and it brings up a third down. Of course, Robin Amin, uh, being the number one receiver, when he's downfield, he attracts a crowd, and Army had the deep zone with two people really watching him inside and outside. Uh, there was very little chance for that pass to be completed. And we hope that at halftime, Bill Fleming, our colleague, will have an opportunity to chat with the president, president of the United States, Gerald Ford. He uh, said he's seated in the Navy side or the near side for the first half. Then he will go over for the second half to enjoy uh, the cheering of the Corps of Cadets, some 4,200 strong. We look at the Navy huddle now. Third down and seven from the 44. Six seconds left in the first half. Navy is in the lead, 17 to nothing of an eye formation. Robin. Tried the old screen up the middle. They were in a prevent with a super safety back there. No sense trying to throw it deep. It'd probably be picked off. So uh, Georgie Wells went to the center screen. I think it was a good call. I do too. It was intended for Goodwin, number 43, and it brings up a fourth down and seven. With two seconds to go in the first half, what would you do here, Ben? Well, you've got uh, one chance. You can uh, flip it on an inside pattern uh, to a good receiver and see if he can run with it, or you can just haul off and lay your ears back and, and throw a deep one down the sidelines. Okay. Amin, at, at the bottom of your screen now out of view, number 80. Oh, they decided to, to, to just try to keep the ball and almost broke it as Roban showed his skill in the open field. He went 21 yards and knocking the ball loose was Al Starkill. So it's halftime with the score, Navy 17, Army nothing. We'll be back at John F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania after a word from our local station. President Gerald Ford was at John F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium today, marking the first time since 1962 a president has made that visit. That, of course, the late John F. Kennedy. Early in the first quarter, Steve Dykus hit from 45 yards out. That put Navy out in front three to nothing. Then later in that quarter, Navy got a break when this punt was fumbled by Gary Smithy. And recovered by Carl Supperson, and that was at the Army 13-yard line. Four plays later, Bob Jackson was having a big day. Both three yards off tackle for the Navy touchdown. The midshipman led 10 to nothing after that first quarter. Billy the 19th liked what he saw and liked what he was chomping on. And with five and a half minutes left in the first half, Jackson scored again, this time on a six-yard sprint around the right side with the extra point Navy's lead. Went out to 17 to nothing, and Army's going to have a tough time. They're going to have to try and get their act together at halftime. This is Bill Flint back at John F. Kennedy Stadium where the President of the United States now is at the center of the field. Everyone is standing around him, and at this moment he is receiving the commemorative coin which he flipped at the beginning of the game the army brigade commander james k abco of st louis missouri is accompanied there by the superintendent of the academy major general sydney berry and the men from navy the superintendent vice admiral william p mack and brigade commander midshipman captain jim adams of beltsville maryland James Schlesinger, the Secretary of Defense, has greeted the President at the center of the gridiron. And now uh, the President, they're headed today despite this uh, rather wintry day. It is a sunshiny day. He is dressed in a fur-collared coat, as you can see. Now he's shaking hands with the Superintendent of the Academy, Major General Barry. Next to uh, Major General Barry is James Schlesinger, the Secretary of Defense, who has been accompanied today by the Secretary of the Army. And now the Brigade Commander, James Edpower, is escorting President Ford to this side of the field. 
and we hope to be able to get a word get a word with him Been something extra special to this game. Well, I've been to, I think, four or five Army Navy games, and every one of them is a different ball game. Every one is interesting, and plus all the excitement, the wonderful cadets and midshipmen. Uh, I really enjoy being here, Bill. I think the Corps is hoping that you will bring them as good a luck as you brought the midshipmen at 17 to nothing uh, against them. Well, I didn't dare mention that I might bring the Army luck when I left the Navy side, but I can cheer a little for the Army now, I guess. You know, Mr. President, football has played a great, great role in your particular life. Just two days ago, you had a, a wonderful reunion with Grand Rapids South the teammates. Well, that old gang that uh, I played high school football with in 1930, we've gotten together every year at Thanksgiving, which was the anniversary of our state championship game. So. You see, uh, 23 out of the 30 back, it was quite a thrill for me. I noticed, too, that Silas McGee was uh, was back for the first time in, what, 44 years? This was the first time uh, since 1931, correct. He's been out in the West Coast as a longshoreman and just retired, and we had a hard time finding him. But uh, he got some friends that helped him get some money, and he came out, and he was as big a ham <laughs> Thursday as, as he was uh, when we were playing ball. You know, one week ago, you were in Vladivostok at your historic summit meeting with Soviet Secretary Brezhnev. And at that time, everybody here in the United States was very much involved with football, particularly Ohio State and Michigan. How did you get word of the game? Well, as a matter of fact, they woke me up about uh, 5.30 in the morning, which was uh, Sunday morning out there and told me the uh, bad news from the point of view of Michigan. They tried to console me by saying that uh, the kick uh, almost went over in the last uh, 30 seconds. Uh, but those games are great, Bill. I fortunately played in three of them. Uh, one, two of them. One, two out of three. Uh, but they seem to be better ball players now and put on a better show. So uh, They nice center a little watch. differently now, don't they? Well, uh, than when you centered. We think we used to uh, do that pretty well, but it's a lot easier to center it the way they do now and block. We used to have to center and block. Uh, so uh, at least in one aspect, I think we uh, did a little bit better than they do today. Well, thank you very much for joining us, President Ford. We want to mention to you that on November 22nd, 1975, the Buckeyes will be in the Michigan Stadium. If you and Mrs. Ford and Mike and John and Steve and Susan can come, I'm sure Don Cannon can find six tickets. Well, I'd like to see it. I had planned on it this year, but then uh, we ended up in Vladivostok, so I got it by radio, and I, I'll see you there on the 22nd. Fine. Thanks very much, sir. Nice to see you. Goodbye now. Thank you very much. President Jerry Ford now will accompany the Corps during the second half of this game. So we'll be back in just a moment. The United States Military Academy is dedicated to frequent updating of learning styles. Indicative of this approach at West Point is an instruction support system, which encompasses a highly sophisticated educational television network as well as an academic computer center. This television system, which has been in operation for over one and a half years, includes 600 monitors distributed throughout the academic area for the use of cadets. Television instruction is designed to supplement rather than replace classroom learning in the 175 courses now offered at West Point. 25 full-time staff members are needed to operate and maintain the system's $3 million worth of equipment. All cadets also have access to over 150 computer terminals, some of which are even located in the barracks. The computers are used in a wide variety of courses, but are particularly useful in the hard science areas of the curriculum. Together, these television and computer systems offer today's West Point cadets the latest in educational technology. Earlier this week, I also visited the Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, where a program of very dynamic growth, including very much construction, is nearing an end. In 129 years. The United States Naval Academy learned long ago that tradition alone is not enough to sustain a great institution. In order to continually attract outstanding young men, the Academy is committed to constant upgrading of its facilities, faculty, and curriculum. The Academy is nearing completion of a new construction program which is the largest in its history, and it includes this new $9.7 million library. 
The Nimitz Library will eventually hold 850,000 volumes, needed by midshipmen who today are choosing from over 500 courses in 27 major fields. As recently as 1964, all midshipmen took the same 40 courses during their four years here at Annapolis. Now being completed adjacent to the Nimitz Library is Rickover Hall, a $27 million engineering studies complex. One phase of the construction program, which was particularly welcomed by midshipmen, was the conversion of Dahlgren Hall into a full-fledged recreational facility. The most notable aspect of the new complex is an ice hockey-sized skating rink, which can be quickly dismantled and converted into a ballroom for... So the halftime is continuing here at John F. Kennedy Stadium as President Ford now has gone up on the Army's side. There you see him greeting the various dignitaries uh, in that box. Incidentally, is Bob Hope, who uh, is enjoying the game today. There's Army Secretary Howard Bo Calloway. All in all, a wonderful occasion. Back in a moment. Well, it's very strange to be hearing the strains of the Victor's March, the victory song of the University of Michigan in an Army-Navy game, but of course, it is in honor of the President of the United States, who incidentally wore number 48 at the University of Michigan, and I took note of the fact that uh, Navy's Chet Moeller wore number 48 in that first half and played outstandingly on defense. As you probably know, uh, President Ford was also a former Navy man. There's Bob Hope there on the left, clowning around a bit. <laughs> And uh, we'll try to get a view of uh, who else is up in the booth. Chris, uh, do you have a word? Yes. Thank you very much, Bill. Bob Holt, who is the Distinguished American Award, the National Football Foundation in the Hall of Fame dinner on December 10th. As Jerry Zarno of Kodak gets the gold medal, which President Ford received two years ago. The Army team is back. The Army-Navy game is brought to you by Schick Injector Twin Blade. The twin with Teflon coated edges. By Chevrolet, you're invited to see Chevy's lineup for 1975 at your Chevy dealers now. Chevrolet makes sense for America. And by Goodyear, the makers of Bigfoot, the new polysteel radial tire. It keeps its feet even in the rain. Seventeen to nothing is the halftime score, and Coach Ben Martin of the Air Force Academy, our guest today, analyzing for us, Coach. Well, I think the story is right there in arithmetic. Uh, Navy has uh, rushed the ball uh, a great deal more than Army, and passing has been virtually non-existent. I think that that's the key to this thing that uh, Army is going to have to be able to throw the ball now, uh, and they can do it. If they go to that straight formation, uh, they throw the ball very well, and I think we'll see a little bit of that very early in the second half. All right, with President Ford now on the far sideline, over there near the Corps of Cadets, we look at the midshipmen of Navy who have taken a 17 to nothing lead as the second half is about to begin. A 45-yard field goal which uh, broke an Army Navy game record, which was held by National Football Hall of Fame uh, official for years and an Army player, Colonel Ed Garbish. It's done today by Steve Dykes of the Naval Academy. Yeah, field goal kickers go. I think Ed Garbage is, uh, is uh, the name that's synonymous with kicking field goals over the years, so that's a great tribute to uh, somebody to kick a ball as far as he did in the old days. Just super. All right, and speaking of Steve Dykes, who broke the record with a 45-yarder here today, he'll be kicking the ball from his own 40 with the wind to his back. And Army will be receiving it and hopefully will be able to move it a little better than they did the first half. Still standing, President Ford on the right. Now Marcus Hardy is deep. Hardy, who returned 25 kickoffs this year for a school record of 603 yards, including a 100-yarder for a touchdown against Duke and a 95-yard touchdown against Vanderbilt. He's very dangerous. All right, here's that kick. It's high. It's Hardy. He's got it at the 4, 5, 10, 15. No hole there. So, the Army will try to move it. And up front, they will have these players. Hodges, Leopold, Arenano, Caslo, Begley, Moritz, and Daly. And the ball will be snapped from the 23-yard line, first and 10. 
It's always interesting to start the second half to see if the strategy is going to change. The Army's still in their bone, uh, but we'll see what they're going to be doing. And they go with their starting quarterback, Scott Golobly, and the fullback from the wishbone, Dan Spangler, number 44, carries on the play. In the backfield, uh, portraits of the players. Golobly down at the bottom. You get a good look at him. He's a junior. And we have Dale Dodrill, who had a couple of fine runs, number 37 in the first half. Dan Spangler, who carried the ball in the last play. And Marcus Hardy. So now it's a second down and six from the 27 for Army. They trail. Second play of the second half, and Spangler gets the call again. And he comes a little closer to that forward stake. But it appears to that they'll uh, need the third down in hopes of getting a first down as Bushack again makes the tackle. He's played well for Navy today. I think that Army's just a little bit uh, reticent to put the ball up in the air in their own backyard, but uh, I'm sure if they get out in a uh, in wide open territory past that 40 yard line, uh, they're going to be doing something a bit different. Third down and less than a yard. And the quarterback sneak, Gallogly, number 14. And he gets the first down. And that should help the cadets. Oh, it sure does. And when you get that first possession, you move it, you get some accomplishment gone. I think it really uh, bolsters their spirits. They're really going to be hitting. Now from the 34, with a uh, split in Howie Williams to the far side. First down play. Delobly wants to throw. Oh, a beautiful catch oh, and a by man. Tony Daly. Face mask on top of it. A 35 yard strike. And Daly is a tight end. The end. the end releases. It's a throwback, a good play fake, and a beautiful ball thrown right on the money. And the referee, Samuel Winterberg, goes 15 closer to the Navy goal. Team Ford. Gets the face mask violation. <laughs> Actually, that's about the best chance he had to keep that one from going all the way. He just grabbed whatever he could get a hold of, and so Army really has an opportunity here, Chris. And that's not a lumbering tight end that caught that ball either now. It's a first attempt for Army to 15 of Navy. Their deepest penetration thus far. Did it for the forward pass. It's Marcus Hardy, number 45. Nice off to the right side. Let's see a replay of the face mask violation. Just reaches out and grabs it. Of course, that's a dangerous thing, and it is a big penalty, but you can really severely injure someone, so it's a 15-yarder from the spot of the foul. After Spengler carried on the last play, let's see what Gologly, the quarterback of Army, will do on a second and eight from the 13. Navy is in the lead, 17 to nothing. All this from JFK Stadium in Philadelphia. And Marcus Hardy, nice across the 10, down to between the eight and nine hash marks. They're back in that unbalanced line attack and they went to the uh, wishbone power play off tackle to the strong side that time. Pretty effective move as they picked up good guarding. I don't think we're shocked occasionally to see Navy's female cheerleaders. They're from other colleges in the Annapolis area. Tryouts were conducted. They're a little outnumbered here today. On a third down and four. Oh, gain of a yard, so it brings up a fourth down. Paypack, defensively strong on the play for the Navy defense. Number 77, the defensive left tackle. So the ball between the hash marks, eight and nine. And it brings up a fourth down. And as we look to the far side, it's a three, a good three yards for the first down. And they're not going for any field goal here. They've got to get a six-pointer, I'm sure. Uh, uh, Homer Smith knows that he has to make a, a conversion out of this one. So uh, you're going to see a play coming up here. All right. Fourth down and three. Army fans. Navy fans. Oh, it's really close. The stakes are on the far side, the opposite side of the field, as the referee, Winterberg, looks to the far side. He calls in the linesman, John A. Warner, Jr., and the crew. And this is now when the Corps of Cadets not make a lot of noise. But should it be to their advantage, you'll hear plenty. We sure will. You will know without being able to see which way it goes. But it is very close. And Army came back to the weak side of their offensive formation that time uh, for the option play. I think it was a good call. Just not enough uh, field to get in the running room they needed. They had to cut back up in there to try to get the yardage. And Navy gives you the indication 
that they did not, Army did not make the first down. Oh, was that a critical play? They stopped him with about two feet to go. And uh, ironically for Army, it was Gene Ford who had the face mask violation that really made the key tackle. There you're looking at uh, President Ford, Major General Sidney Barry, the United States Military Academy Superintendent, and a man that has done so much as an American, Bob Hope. So, Navy has the ball now, first and ten at their own six. Amin is flanked to the far side of the field, power eye in the backfield. And Army's defense is fired up. Goodwin was in there with the carry and uh, 51 Dyson and also 94 trailer, Tiki trailer, as we look at the offensive line of Navy. Owen, Seward, Collier, Reed, Driscoll, along with uh, Beckler, number 56. There is a look at Mike Roban, the quarterback from Great Falls. This is Robin Amon, number 80. This is Jerry Goodwin, number 43, and 25, Cleveland Cooper. So on a second eight, Navy stopped at the 10. Oh, this is a very important series for the Navy, just as it was for the Army a series before. They've got to get out of their own backyard, and this play in particular is very significant, uh, whether they'll put it up in the air to, to get it out of there. I, I rather think they're, they've got a big choice to make here. All right, because it's third down and six. And the ball is by the 10. We have 10 minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Navy with the ball, leading 17 to nothing. Navy has converted one of six third down tries. Here's another. In motion, Jackson has scored both Navy touchdowns. And again, it is Goodwin. And it appears that he did not make the Navy first down, so it'll bring up a punting situation. And on comes the specialty team, the punting team. Well, they do have a good kicker in John Stufflebeam. I rather I think that they decided they wouldn't take any chances to have a turnover deep in their own backyard. They have the wind at their back, and, and with a kicker like Stufflebeam, I think that was a percentage play. All right, look at him limber up that leg. He's really a high kicker. All right, it's number 21, John Stufflebeam. Pass a little troublesome. Number 26 is Gary Smithy of Army. And the ball rolls dead at the Army 35 and a half, a 50 yard key punt. We'll be back in a moment. That's John Stufflebeam, and they gave him a roller, and he showed a lot of cool. I'll tell you, he picked it up and hurried a little bit, but got some rhythm into it, and it shows what a perfect high kicking form he has. Got 50 yards out of that kick. Reminds me of Sam Sneed, the golfer, who can get that leg above his head. And speaking of golf, I'd like to congratulate you on winning the National Football Coaches Golf Tournament in Hot Springs. How'd you do that? <laughs> I beat Frank Brawls by two strokes. He, did, he, he didn't have his putter with him. <laughs> From the 36 now, Army has the ball. And Hardy, number 45, fine ball carrier, gets a yard or two as Bushack makes the tackle. Army, if you just joined us, had made their deepest penetration to the eight. They failed on fourth down. Here comes a pass offense. That's Lehman Hall and a spread formation team. They're going to go to the air lanes now, Chris. All right, and I'm glad the bomb squad's in there because I am too. we need a little Let's go over the Army. Lehman Hall is the head of that unit, number 16 of freshmen, 6'5". There he is. Rifles it down the middle, and it was low. 
I tell you, the first shot out of the gun, though, Navy did what they should. That kid's a freshman. They put the blitz to him, and he had to release early. They're going to try to get him rattled because when he has the time, uh, he's a good one. He can throw that ball. Chuck Tysig was the intended receiver. Number 46, Hall now has thrown three times, completed one for nine yards. So now here he is with a third down and about nine from his own 37. Woodcock, number 40, the near side. Hall rifling one and uh-oh. He threw it to somebody, but it's from the other service. Yes, Jeff Scott, number 53 of Atlanta, Georgia, a junior linebacker, pulled it out, and there we now have the third Army turnover. So that, he threw that one into a crowd. They went from the blitz uh, lock on defense to a drop back zone that time, and uh, he didn't have time to read it, so he threw it into a crowd. And again, super field position for the Navy. They scored one touchdown, getting a fumble recovery at the Army 13, and on a fourth play, went in. So, Roban hands off and Navy, decision like with Goodwin the fullback, carrying the ball to the 42 of Army, so it'll be a second down and three. Dunn Cavage, the linebacker, number 54, on the tackle. You know, I haven't been around a lot of service academy games, Chris. Uh, the last snap was taken by a freshman, a plebe, and a snap before that by another plebe on the other side of the line of scrimmage. That's really pressure. All right, second and three. We're in the third quarter, 8-16 to go. Navy leading 17 to nothing. They're moving the ball. And Cleveland Cooper gets to about the 40. And it'll bring up a third down, little more than one. Chuck Baker, along with uh, Tyke Trailer, a freshman from Lockland, Ohio, and on the play. You know, of all the total first downs, of which 21 have been made, 19 of them by rushing, that shows that passing has really been a secondary role here today. So let's see what the midshipman will do. Third and one. Gilmore. First down for Navy. We try to mention as many hometowns as we can because combined, the two rosters have players from 30 of the 50 states. So it is a representation of the entire country if you added in the entire corps and the entire brigade. It really is. I think uh, the corps and our cadet wing and the brigade of midshipmen, uh, they're uh, from all over the 50 states, and I think it's nice that their football team should be from all over the United States, too. Robin Amin to the near side of the field, first and 10 for Navy at the 35 of Army. They lead 17 to nothing. Navy. Beautiful pass by Roban. And after catching the ball, Kevin Sullivan wanted more. He's a native of uh, Philadelphia, Chestnut Hill Academy product. Now crossing over pattern where they clear the zone with the split man and then cross the tight end over into that zone. It's a very popular pattern and it was executed extremely well that time by Mike Roban. First and ten now for the Navy from the 21. Army now against Navy in this classic game have failed to score in six quarters. Last year they were shut out 51 to nothing. It is now 17 to nothing. But the game is far from over. 6.43 to go, third quarter. Ed Gilmore from Long Branch, New Jersey, carried the ball, and Mark Smith of Fresno, California, on the tackle. 66 was the co-captain now moving back into the Navy huddle. Cliff Collier from Belt, Texas, a senior. In 15, Mike Roban from Great Falls, Montana. That appeared to be 53, or 57 rather, Steve McCraw of El Paso, Texas, a freshman, watching. So now it's a second down and seven, make it second and six. From the 17 of Army, Navy with the ball. That's a delay penalty, took a little too long to get her gone. That was Bob Jackson uh, moving. Following will be the Prudential College School Board with Dave Diles, and uh, then it's going to be ABC's Wide World of Sports, an abbreviated version, but one of the most interesting and beautiful and musical that you will see ever. International figure skating featuring Janet Lynn, Gordon McKellen of Lake Placid, and a host of others, Dorothy Hamill, international champion John Curry, right down the line. We were there, and it was a beautiful event, 4.15 Eastern Time, and then following will be Southern California going against Notre Dame right here on ABC. 
Second and 12 as we had a penalty. Into the flat to Jackson. And Jackson. Look at the battle for the ball. He got near the 11. I think the whistle was blown, but that uh, that was a flood pattern. They, uh, they were unbalanced to start with, and then they motioned Jackson out to the strong side, so they had two receivers for one man in the zone to cover, and Roban did a good job of picking out the open man. We've got uh, a little more than three, a little less than four, on third down now for Navy. All right, Navy, one of seven. Third down conversions. Gilmore. Another close one coming up as Mark Smith, number 93, moved laterally, along with Dave Duncavage. It's obvious that she wants Army to win. Looks that way. I'll tell you, Navy's got the speed factor going for him now with Gilmer and Cooper, and, and uh, they're really moving the ball to the outside. All right, fourth and one. Would you go for three or go for first down or six? <laughs> it's easy for me to say what to do now. I think they're going to go for a touchdown. All right. That pretty much is your football philosophy. I know that. Well, I think when they're that Academy. close and with this much of a lead. Uh-oh, they called a timeout. It's got it. Navy calls timeout here at JFK Stadium in Philadelphia. The 75th game, 4.47 to go in the third quarter. And Navy is in the lead over Army, 17 to nothing. All right, we're back again at JFK Stadium. It's a fourth down and less than a yard for Navy. Navy had started this drive at the 49 following an interception of an Army pass. And they go for it on fourth down, leading 17 to nothing here in the closing minutes of the third quarter. Gary Goodwin, the fullback, and uh, looks from here. Now, the indication, first down, and, or rather, and the ball is right on the 10. Let's go down to Don Collison. Navy running back Cleveland Cooper has suffered a slight fly contusion in his left leg. He's loosening up on the sidelines right now, and the Navy trainer tells me he should be able to go back in the game soon. Chris? Okay, thank you, Don. Don Tollison, Bill Fleming down on the field as we now have a first and ten. The ball's on the stripe. Navy. Jackson. Jackson has scored the two Navy touchdowns. Jeff Bruckner, number 61 on the tackle here on the near side of the field. 38, Bob Jackson to Linden Wall, New Jersey. 6'4", 231 pounds. He's got a lot of size. The lines aren't quite the size of uh, the other NCAA colleges. Army's offensive line, 222-pound average. Navy's 221. Defensively, Navy 216 and Army 207. Army's in their goal line defense. They, uh, they run 6'5", uh, on that other play, and they're in it again, expecting that front of the Second and three from the three. And Army at the challenge of Bob Jackson. Rick Conniff, number 91, you see him there in the white Army jersey. That interesting thing before the game, Navy came out in white jerseys. Army had on white as they have now. Yeah, that's unusual. Then they had to go back in and change again. Somebody got the signals for us, they did. And I think they're keen on Bob Jackson now because he's the guy that's really hurt him down in close. Uh, they're going to have to change up and give that ball to somebody else, I guess. They've gone 45 yards in nine plays in this drive. It's a third down. Oh, that's a super defensive play. Yes. This time Gilmore carried the ball, and up comes the fourth down. And they black it by less than a yard. Dyson, we must give credit to him, number 51, for that fine defensive play for the cadets. Oh, this is what it's all about. Right on that goal line. Just preserving everything that's important to you. Army's really got to dig in. All right, here's the tenth play of this drive. Fourth down, Navy. And the cadets now should be fired up because they take over on downs but deep in their own territory. Nice work by the Army defensive unit. Dave Duncavage tipped the ball. He's that linebacker we talked about earlier. 
so we have two minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Let's take a break. All right. After stopping maybe on fourth down, at their own one, Army has the ball now, trailing 0 to 17. And oh! Holy mackerel. A little of everything for Navy. A safety. The Navy blitzed him and caught the quarterback in that end zone they were going to run the option play instead of giving it straight ahead that's a pretty dangerous thing to do as they found out and scott delogway has caught in his own end zone Tampa Hart was one of the players there, number 84, the co-captain of the midshipmen, in on Golobly. And now a free kick. Oh, everything has happened. Well, it day. certainly is. Uh, they had the gap defense. They, they came to the inside on him, pinched it off, made that penetration, which is a dangerous thing when you're that close to the goal line, and Navy was very effective in it. And, of course, looking on on the far sideline, Ben, is the Army captain. Bob Johnson, who can't do anything about it because although he is the captain, the non-playing captain, can't get in there and help. You know, the poor guy has uh, had that shoulder problem in the operation and was out of action the entire year. We played against him for two years. He was a super player and a great young man, and we certainly wish him the best. All right, number 47, Steve Barnett of Los Angeles from Mexico will do the kicking. Normally, in a situation like this, Chris, they punt the ball. Right, I'm surprised to see it teed up. Robin Amin has it for Navy 30, 35, 40, up to about the 45. 18-yard return by Navy's Robin Amin. And at the moment, it's 19 to nothing. And we have two minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play. Part of the brigade. Well, probably uh, the reason for the place kick rather than the punt is the wind now. It's picking up quite a bit, and uh, the punt would not have gained them that much. I figured they'd uh, they get a power kick down low to get the ball downfield as far as they possibly could. Watch Ben Martin of the Air Force Academy with us today, and we're going. In motion, Jackson, the 45, first and 10. Oh, man. First year man. He's a big kid, weighs about 205 pounds, and he is a strong runner. Dunn Cavage in on the tackle. As the defense has done, Cavage, the linebacker, is, uh, picks up the bootleg, which uh, is a tough thing, trying to fool him, but it didn't fool him. There's a good hit right here as Mike Robam puts on the power, and Dunn Cavage really brings him down, though, to save a longer gain. And number 15, Mike Roban, holding his head. So we have a new Navy quarterback bill per year of Granada Hills, California, junior number 16. And it's Goodwin who carried for a couple of yards on a second down and eight. Kniff on the tackle. Of course, per year was their starter for many games, Chris, and uh, he'll do a super job for him there. He knows the offense, he knows his players, and he's been in the Army-Navy game before. Uh, uh, I think that uh, he'll do a fine job for the Navy team, although we hate to see Mike Roban go out of there with any kind of an injury. For a year, throwing two touchdown passes this year, including about 54% of his passes. So now he has a third down and two. Play, trying to get the Navy first down on the ground with Goodwin, the fullback. First down for the Navy. Well, that's Goodwin. He is really a quick starter. You can just see the difference between him and those other guys. He's really gone in there. He's had 15 carries and 80 yards. And most of them quick burst through that line. The fullback slant plays. And we have a different center as well, which often happens with a new quarterback. Pete uh, Cuccio, Brooklyn, New York, number 52, snapping it per year. First and 10 from the 41 now for Navy. Throwing in Army territory. Rush was on. Jim Hollingsworth may have tipped that ball to give for a year um, credit to him. Well, that's the first throw for a guy coming into the game. That's a tough deal to throw your first pass coming in unexpectedly, not warmed up. So I don't think he had much on that pass. So it's a second down and ten now here at John F. Kennedy Stadium with 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Roban shaken up, and that, uh, the report to us is that he will return in the fourth quarter. Second down. 
and Cleveland Cooper, number 25. He and Goodman providing a very fine one-two punch for the Naval Academy. Kniff, number 91, the middle guard, on the tackle. And the stop was made at the 34. So it's going to be a third down and about three. All these possession plays are turning that clock around fast, which is what Army doesn't want to happen. But Navy knows it, and they have done a good job of maintaining possession. There's Cooper, 25. Zigging and zagging, Cooper couldn't find the room. Freshman Steve Melich of Orlando, Florida, number 22, made the stop. Third quarter is ended. We'll be back for the fourth in a moment snap of the fourth quarter. Navy with a fourth down and one at the 31 of Army. They lead 19 to nothing. Big play. And Goodwin appears to have made the Navy first down. Let's go to Don Tollison. Navy's freshman quarterback, Mike Roban, has a slightly bruised left shoulder. The doctors are working on it right now, and they tell me he should be able to go back in the game later. Chris? Thank you, Don. Bill Fleming, Don Tollison, Coach Ben Martin. We're all here at JFK Stadium in Philadelphia, the first of three big events this afternoon on ABC. International figure skating at approximately 4.15 at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Notre Dame, Southern California. First and 10 for Navy at the 30. Jackson in motion. Marker is down. As per year, is sacked by Rick Conniff. Rick Conniff. Oh, he's playing a great game and those guys from West Point. He, he's quick, he moves around, runs around those blocks and then penetrates very quickly. That's super play by a down lineman. And the third quarter statistics, uh, I think the significance of that is the total yards 281 and those turnovers down the bottom. Oh my goodness. And we have an illegal procedure penalty. And uh, with the ball now at the 38. And it's going to be a second down and 18. Penalty decline, of course, because the loss was eight yards. So there you see 16 per year. Cooper. Hoping to clear some traffic, you probably saw him, was number 43, the fullback, Gary Goodwin. Cooper going outside, and Mark Smith made the tackle. That was the second and 18 play, and let's see the advances to the 29, gain of nine, it's third down and nine. So today, Cooper has had 18 carries, he has passed the 106-yard mark. There he goes limping off the field, and he's the first player in Army-Navy history to go over 100 yards in three successive Army-Navy games. It's quite a tribute to his ability. It really is, and he's a great competitor. All right, third and nine for Navy at the Army 29. Per year. All the pressure is on Roban again. They are really fired up. The Army defensive team did a super job. You know, the Cleveland Cooper... Uh, Chris, he reminds me of Anthony Davis from SC. Same running style, about the same size, a very scintillating runner, got the quick wheels. Uh, I think the uh, <laughs> network's interest in real good football playing with uh, people like Cleveland running the ball and Anthony Davis. And with the comments later, I hope as good as you are <laughs> on the SC Notre Dame game. Oh, he likes those good football players just as I do. All right, John Stubblebean back to punt on fourth down and 18. Army will get the ball. rolling. Smithy and White was the deep receiver, but the Navy protected. And again, Army forced back to its wall again. We'll try to move it from the seven. We'll return in a moment. All right, Army has the ball. First and ten at their own seven. Delocally is the quarterback, and from the wishbone with a split into the far side. Lofts one over the line to big number 83, Tony Daly, the sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland. That shows a little courage, I tell you, to throw it right from inside the shadow right there, but that was well executed into a little hole in that zone. Ten yards is what they needed as we see it again. Well-executed play all the way. As they read the zone, that ball was delivered perfect timing. 
Bob Simons has come into the lineup, number 34, from Brooklyn, New York, for Army, with a first and 10 at the 17. Navy leading 19 to nothing. Two in a row completions. This one to John Hodges of Princeton, New Jersey, a senior, number 31. Well, Hodges has been the number one guy, and he's split wide. He's, he's got zone coverage out there. He gets a little cushion, breaks it off, runs to the first down yardage. He's heading for that chain gang, and he sees it and heads right for it. That's a well-executed play, good timing against the zone. And it brings him out to about the 28 and a half with a first and 10. Tony Williams, 89, is split to the near side of the field. Maybe leading 19 to nothing. We're in the fourth quarter, 12 and a half to go. He wanted to throw uh, another pass, but Tim Hart, number 84, from San Luis Obispo, California, was in there too quickly. There you see him, number 84. He is a co-captain. Yes, when you're when you're throwing play pass fakes like that, uh, and the defense knows you have to pass by, it does give them a little advantage. So they just dig in and rush the passer despite the play fake. Four by now, three or three in this half. Second and nine. The junior. The old wishbone attack. They're running at the perimeter, but the pitch was taken away very nicely by the perimeter people on the Navy defense. Randy Hutcherson, number 41, on the tackle. You see him there. There's uh, in the choir like huddle of Navy. We have a third down coming up, and now the passing team comes in. Yeah, here comes the split offense now with Lehman Hall and company. Uh, they have a specialty team, and they're going to go to pure pass right now. Bob Woodcock, 40, is set to the near side as a play. Williams is opposite. Third and seven. And it fails. So Navy's reading that spread formation very well, uh, not giving uh, Hall much time and uh, no real escape routes. Uh, so here, here comes another team on the field this time, fourth down situation. Jeff Sapp, uh, Ben Martin from Colorado Springs, number 61, gets the defensive credit there. Yeah, we know Jeff Sapp. He was an outstanding high school player right in Colorado. We missed out on him, but he is a super kid. But he's in one of the three service academies, and it's credit to him. Here's the punt. Not too long. Dave Hoopengardner, and it goes out of bounds at approximately the 38 of Navy. So with 10 minutes and 46 seconds following a 31-yard punt, we'll take this pause in Philadelphia. 10.46 remaining in the game, the 75th Army-Navy Classic, Navy leading 19 to nothing. They have the ball again as President Ford watches. First and 10 from their own 38. The quarterback is Mike Roban, who was shaken up earlier, and he lost the handle, but regains it. Let's go down to Don Tomlinson. If Army had to dedicate this game to one man, it would have to be their non-playing captain, Bob Johnson. Johnson, who is the first black captain in Army history, has not played in a single game this year. This summer, he had a cancer removed from his right arm, and in order to avoid possible permanent damage, he had to give up football. The first doctors thought he would be unable to receive a combat commission, but he told me earlier this week that he'll get that commission and fulfill a lifelong dream. Chris? Thank you, Don. Robin Amin now. Set away to the far side on second down and eight from the 40. Roban back in the lineup. Handing the ball off to Mike Yeager, number 10 of Henderson, Texas, a junior. All right, good defense by Conniff and those guard. Uh, he beats the double team block and gets up off the ground. Uh, he had gone to the strong side. They ran a weak side play, made a nice recovery, and uh, made the tackle. That's a super play by a down lineman. Rick Conniff from Winter Park, Florida, senior 6'3". So now we have a third and five from the 43. Loose ball, Goodwin carried the ball, and it looks like, was it Roban that came over to cover the ball? Yes, it was. It's a lot of good hitting out there. Uh, the defense has been uh, primary, of course. Now Navy just trying to get that clock moving around, so the same with a simple ground attack. But the Army defense has been hitting very fiercely throughout the contest. All right, John Stufflebean back to kick for Navy on a fourth down and four. The snap will come from the 44. Here's the kick. Gary Smithy looks at it again. And kick coverage for Stufflebean is superb. 
punt only going 34 yards, but now it's at the 22-yard line of Army. A former Southern California star, Frank Gifford, about to talk. The game's going on around the country, as well as Army, Navy, USC, Notre Dame, and one of the biggest is all tied up. It's Oklahoma, rated by many as the top team in the country, and Oklahoma State at 10 apiece. Take it away, Chris. Okay, Frank Gifford, we have a first and 10 for the cadets from their own 22. They have yet to score a long pass going out, and oh, what a great effort on Gologly's pass by John Hodges of Princeton, New Jersey, number 31. Let's isolate on that last play. This is a pretty standard uh, wishbone pass play. They got a one wide receiver. He runs down and runs a fly pattern, just speed breaks straight down the field. There's a little play fake. The ball is laid up, and he's supposed to run under it. This one just barely overthrown. Nice effort. All right, it'll be a second down of 10 for Army. Set to the near side of the field, Howie Williams, number 89. Globally throws to tough Tony Daly, number 83, and he's out for the Army first down. That's a fast play against the flow. The, the zone flow goes toward the, the fullback, and uh, Gologly sits, sets up. He's going to flow right, looks right, sets, and throws back a little curl-in pattern to the other side. Very effectively done. That's good execution. Here's the end coming in. He curls up, stays open, and is hit a uh, very good timing. That's a precision pass play. Daly's proven today he doesn't mind traffic, then. Not at all. He's a tough kid. First and ten now from the 39 for the cadets. 8.18 to go in the game. Gilogly lofting one out again, trying to get to it. Number 31, John Hodges, covered by John Sturgis, a freshman, number 28, from Mountain View, California. That's the base fly play, just flopped over to left formation, comes off the fake, lays it up on a, a streaker, try to get it down that sidelines. They need a big play now, a really big one. Gilogly calling the signals. He's thrown seven times, completed four for 72 yards. Daly has caught three of them. 71 yards. Woodcock 40 to the near side of the field on second and 10 from the 38. And lying out there is Woodcock. And stepping in the picture is John Sturgis, the freshman who covered the previous pass play. They're in a pure zone that time. Uh, they're not being fooled at all. Navy settling back, uh, playing almost a prevent type secondary, getting good depth, uh, leaving a big cushion because they know that Army has to go deep. Members of the brigade look like as though they're taking them in stride, and well, they can because their team leads by a score of 19 to nothing. Fourth Army turnover over the third interception. We'll be back. This was the last pass. And watch the interception by Sturgis. Good field position, body position, rebounding. Take the ball at its highest point. That's the way to intercept the pass. And now Navy has the ball, first and 10 at their own 25, leading 19 to nothing with 8.06 left in the game. Roban giving to Goodwin his fullback. What if we'll have much passing in the Notre Dame Southern California game coming up on ABC at 5 p.m.? Well, I think so. Uh, Tommy Clements from uh, Notre Dame is a superb passer. He can really throw it. Uh, of course, uh, Johnny uh, Hayden uh, has a, a really a good strong arm for SC, although they have not been a passing team of late, but I think there'll be a lot of good passing in that contest. All right. And maybe continuing to uh, run out the clock with their ground game. Ed Gilmore carrying on that play. Stu Miller, number 32, on the tackle. They make a couple more first downs here. It's going to be very, very difficult for Army to have any chance to win the football game. So it's going to be a third down and four from the 31, maybe with the ball. In the college division, as we see the president again, Ithaca is leading Slippery Rock, 27 to 14. <laughs> Ithaca undefeated, 9-0. This is the, the, the winner of this will go to the Stag Bowl on ABC next week. And our statistician, Ben Harvey from Princeton, goes to Ithaca. Is he happy? Happier than the cadets here, as Ed Gilmore carried on the play. Another critical first down. That means maintaining possession of football, letting the clock run around. And our spotter, a native of Norristown, Pennsylvania, Bill Friel. I think this is his 453rd game with us. Uh, Temple, his alma mater, isn't playing today, so he has nothing to cheer about. <laughs> Six minutes, 35 seconds remaining. First and 10 now for Navy at the 36-yard line. Oh, 
the band to Bob Jackson. At that time, they set the strong side of the formation and an unbalanced line to the right side of the field, and they came back to the short side as the Army overshifted to meet that formation change. A very effective move by the quarterback, uh, Navy using sound ground tactics to maintain possession. In the backfield for Navy, with Cleveland Cooper out, who's gained over 100 yards again today in another Army-Navy game, we have 22 Gilmore, Jackson 38, Goodwin 43, the quarterback is 15 Roban, Amin is flanked to the far side on second and six. The Army's changed up the defense on that down. They came into an eight-man front, stacked the linebackers because now they're fully aware that Navy's just going to be trying to run the clock and run off tackle inside. Georgie Welsh talking to the linesman on his side, uh, wondering about what's going on. What's that clock to go faster, I think? A native of Coldale, Pennsylvania. And he just called a play to send it in. George, uh, an ex-quarterback, of course, has a real solid foundation in tactical football, and he knows what he's doing out there right now, I'll tell you that. And after having been consistent under Joe Paterno of Penn State, his victory in Navy over Penn State this year must have been a thrill. How sweet it was, I know that one. Third down and six. Well, they wanted the clock to run around, but now it stopped. Let's go to Don Tallison. As many of you know, it's almost time for the Heisman Trophy to be announced. And later on this afternoon on ABC, you'll be able to see two of the top contenders for that award, USC's Anthony Davis and Notre Dame's Tom Clements. Immediately following Y World of Sports, we'll be moving to the Los Angeles Coliseum to watch John McKay's USC Trojans face Air Force Agents' Notre Dame Fighting Irish in one of the great traditional battles. Chris? Now it's third down 11. The down remains the same on the four five yards. Ed Gilmore, number 22. Carries on the play out to about the 40. From the 35 to the 40 is Stuhl Miller and 51 Greg Tyson make the tackle. And we have four minutes and 41 seconds as we look at members of the Coral Cadets, the Black Knights of the Hudson, West Point, United States Military Academy. Well, they'd like to have something to celebrate, but it's looking like it's getting a more and more fleeting thing for the cadets from the Hudson River. John Stubblebeam. Strong kicker, number 21, Gary Smithy, waits deep. Oh, and he gets that forward bounce on the kicks when they're not fielded. Yeah, he sure does. He's a, a great kicker. And today he showed his tool really a couple of times when he got bad snaps from center and still got the ball away. And a couple of times he kicked Army way back deep in their own territory. Kicking really is vitally important, especially in a possession-type football game as this has turned out to be. You know every American can help our Olympic cause this year by sending $5 to the United States Olympic Committee, Box 1976, Cathedral Station, Boston, Zip 02118. I'll tell you more about it after this play from the 24 of Army trailing 19 to nothing. And uh, Lehman Hall, the passing quarterback, throws one. And he throws it to number 46, Chuck Tysing. So continuing with uh, the Olympic address, uh, after you send $5 to the United States Olympic Committee at Box 1976, Cathedral Station, Boston, in appreciation, you'll receive a colorful embroidered patch commemorating America's participation in the 1976 Winter and Summer Olympic Games. The Navy's in the prevent defense now. They have a two deep, uh, two, four, six under, and three rushing. They, uh, they've covered that field pretty well. The three, three men rushing, they ball out there. So on second and three, freshman number 16, Lehman Hall, carried on the play, lost the handle, and it has recovered again the fifth turnover for Army. And that has told much of the story of this game. If you just joined us with three minutes and 32 seconds left in the game. The scoring started with a 45-yard field goal by Dykes. Uh, then Jackson, a three-yard run for his first of two touchdowns. Let's look at that last play. They're in the uh, shotgun uh, tee. Lehman Hall rolls against that prevent, but he's not used to rolling out and carrying the ball. He gets a good shot, so the ball's dropped up. George Marcoulis of Carson, California, recovered for Navy, and now at the 36-yard line, his first and 10, and there's one of those uh, cheerleaders that was recruited from one of the colleges in the Annapolis area. And it was intended for Robin Amin, number 80, of Midwest City. That was a little surprise move. I guess they wanted to solve it away. Came out off. 
After a turnover, though, it's not a bad idea to go for broke. Uh, psychologically, the defense is usually not ready to play, and, and uh, I think that that's, uh, that's indicated they should do that. Then we have to choose a defensive player of the game and an offensive player of the game as well. It's going to be tough. Rick Cuniff has been very good today, number 91, the middle guard. He, uh, in a losing cause, he has played his heart out for Army. In fact, he hit Roban. What a rush he put on him. He's been out in second and 10 from the 36. And there is a great offensive star as well as his teammate Cooper, Gary Goodwin. And the advance is to, let's call it the 31, which brings up a third down and five with three minutes and ten seconds remaining in the ball game. Darkens here. The field lights were turned on at halftime just in case. Sun has been shining throughout the afternoon. Navy on third down conversions is only three of 13. Here's a third and five. Jackson in motion who scored the two Navy touchdowns. Gilmore. Now there's no doubt what Navy has in mind here. They, I don't know what they're doing here. We got a fourth down situation coming up, but uh, they can do almost anything they want to do at this point in time, Chris. All right. See a couple of different linemen come in. On fourth down, Navy uh, has tried to go for it three times. They've made two of them. Well, let's see what they do on their fourth try. Fourth and one. Very close. Uh, they gave it to the big guy. Bob Jackson, 231 pounds. Let's watch the defense. The defense is stacked in there. It's a gap eight for all intents and purposes. Eight men up front, all closing the gaps to the inside. And it's an off-tackle slant, which is the best play possible against that. But uh, there we go. They have the good D going against that one. Uh-oh. Oops. Got a holding penalty called against Navy. I didn't see that one coming up. Did you? No, I didn't see it at all. But the measurement will come first. Oh, that'll give Army a chance to refuse it and maintain possession or else put them back 15 and make it fourth down again. Right. So the officials are heads up. Ball goes over. All right, the Army defense has done its job in this particular series of downs. So they take over, declining the penalty, of course. So for the cadets, wouldn't it be nice if they could get one score on the board because they've gone seven quarters against the Navy. Right. That. It will give them a lift. I mean, they've worked so hard. The hitting's been terrific. All right, the play will come from the 26, first and 10, and the masked marble of Army. They need to put him in the game. Superman. Number 14, Gologly, pitching it out to an option pitch from Greg McClaster. Two quarterbacks in the lineup. Well, that's a razzle-dazzle when they do that. A halfback pass, a pass over an option, but it was a pass all the way that time. And it's a dipsy doodle that worked. Here it is. Here's a fake, the pitch back, a left-hander rolling out to his left. Hits it up. It's kind of a wobbly. Didn't photograph too well, but it's a completion. Here's our receiver, Johnny Hodges, out there. He's, a, he's really a clever receiver. He reads the problem, gives a spin out to the outside, gets open, comes back, and then gets out of bounds. All right, on a first down play, hoping to pass was Gologly, the third-string quarterback, McGlasker, had gone out of the lineup as Tim Harden and Dave Paypack put the stop at the line of scrimmage. It'll be a second and ten, and there's Billy the 19th. Looks like he's smiling, I think, if that's a good smile. Look at those massive horns always pointing toward the Navy's goal line. Isn't he a beautiful thing? Yeah, he really is. Locally, picking them up and laying them down, coming inside the 40 now, maybe. Time left right. in the ball game. Well, the field clock is covered <laughs> by fans. One minute and nine now. Okay. Army's trying to move the ball any way possible to, to throw or get out of bounds. they got to get close enough to try to get some points on the board just to salvage a little pride in this contest. Scoreboard show coming up then. Janet Lynn and other national skating stars in White World of Sports followed by Notre Dame SC. Gologly, third down and three. And trying.
trying hard was Tony Daly. Oh, that's really tough to get down deep against that prevent. That's almost a, what they call a victory defense now, Chris. They've got uh, eight people back defending the pass and uh, two guys rushing and one protecting the draw on the screen. Uh, they have quite a challenge to try to get some points on the board. And this is unusual after Navy came up with 17 points in the first half. The only scoring in the second half was a safety when globally was tackled in the end zone. All right. Fourth down and three. We have 46 seconds left in the Diamond Anniversary Army-Navy game. Navy is in the lead 19 to nothing. Back again at JFK Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Executive producer of ABC Sports and NCAA football is Rune Arledge. Our game was produced today by Terry Jastro, directed by Chuck Forty. Associate director Jack Gallivan here in the booth as Galogli in fourth down and three gives it to Hardy. Hardy has a first down. Time is running out. He got out of bounds to stop the clock. And we have 39 seconds remaining. We'd like to also pat on the back Vern Hendrickson, our technical director, assistant the producer Chris Carmody, engineering supervisor Vern Carrick, and unit manager Murray Schwartz. We appreciate their help. Well, the West Putters are still trying. They're doing everything they can to make a score because they, they want to take out of here something on that scoreboard. They put into a lot of effort. They've had very few breaks. Uh, they turned the ball over five times to Navy. The Navy has not returned a favor very often. So now, with uh, 39 seconds left in this Army-Navy game, it'll be a first and ten for the cadets at the Navy 27. We just received the final. Ithaca has defeated Slippery Rock 27 to 14, and they go to the Stag Bowl be seen on ABC next week. I'll tell you, Chris, even way out west in Colorado, people know about Slippery Rock. Right. And you know about Janet Lynn, too, who will appear at about 415 with other skating stars on Wide World. Yes, she's a Broadmoor star and a lovely young lady. She skated at the Air Force Academy rink as a matter of fact. And so will Timmy Albright, former Olympic champion. Now, first and ten, Army, Lehman Hall, the passer. Gets hit in by Dave Paypack and was the ball loose. It was. But was recovered by number... Well, we missed his number, but time has been called by the cadets of Army. We've had their problems today with five turnovers. And here's a former Navy man, President Gerald Ford. Bob Caslin recovered the ball. We'd like to read a letter we received from Seaver Peters, athletic director at Dartmouth College and chairman of the NCAA Television Committee. It says, congratulations are indeed in order to the ABC Television Network for its outstanding coverage of the college football scene during this season. This is the ninth consecutive year that ABC has shared the great game of college football with its viewers. As a matter of fact, of the 23 years the NCAA has had a television package, 12 have been with ABC. When the 1974 season is over, 70 different institutions from all three NCAA divisions will have been exposed in regional and national telecasts. And this game is one of them. With a second down and 18 from the 35, 20 seconds to go. Army trying to get on the scoreboard. And Bob Simons again tackled by Dave Paypack. Oh, that was a great play by Paypack because he is only one of three in the primary zone. The letter uh, goes on to thank Rune Arley's, Chuck Howard, and all the executives, announcers, producers, etc. of ABC. So we'd like to thank Seaver Peters and the NCAA Television Committee for that nice pat on the back. Always nice to get that then. Right. And I'd like to congratulate you on a lovely job as uh, my colleague here in the booth. No, Chris, it's really been fun. These are my kind of people, and that's my kind of game. <laughs> We have 11 seconds to go in this game, and we'll be giving you the Chevrolet Scholarship winner, offensive player of the game, and defensive player of the game as well. All right, Howie Williams is set to the far side on a third down, and 17 from the 34. 11 seconds to go. Bob Woodcock, another potential receiver in the double wing formation, going downfield. Three men out there. All throws. Too long, 89, Howie Williams was out there. We have four seconds left on the clock, and uh, some of the fans now are trying to get the goalpost to the left. And the goalpost on the right 
goes down. Well, I don't think they want to kick a field goal anyway, Chris. That's the exuberance of uh, the people in this. Everybody gets involved in an Army-Navy game. Ben, uh, what players do you like, offensive and defensive uh, award winners today? Well, I, I think that the fact that Cleveland Cooper went over 100 for the third straight Army-Navy game, and he's an inspirational player, and the Navy is a victor because of that. I think that the, offensively he should be. And, and on defense, the Army defense was tenacious, and I think uh, Rick Conniff up front, the uh, nose guard, did a super job. Every play, all the way for him. Cooper, 18 carries, 106 yards, and you heard us mention 91. Rick Conniff so often. The senior from Winter Park, Florida. So in his last game... For the Black Knights of the Hudson, I'm sure that he'll appreciate it, as will his teammates, the scholarship of $1,000 going into the General Scholarship Fund at West Point. And the same is true of Cleveland Cooper, $1,000 in the General Fund of the United States Naval Academy. That means a lot to those young men, and I think they're appreciated very much when they go back home. They've contributed just a little bit more than the average guy uh, in a very important context. The by now is trying to um, escort or ask or remove fans. The fans have uh, removed both goalposts, which this year in college, uh, rather on the end line, and uh, they're down. The crowd here today, which included President Gerald Ford looking into the sunshine, totaled 83,247. And those are the midshipmen from the Naval Academy, we have plenty to cheer about. On the other hand, it is a long gray line for the cadets of the Hudson. Yeah, they're trying to clear that south uh, end zone because the Army's going to try to throw a uh, football into the, that direction, and they have to have all the room that they need there, and uh, that's only fair. They should get them out of there because uh, even if there's only just one more play, they deserve to have the complete football field to work in. Another game today, Notre Dame Southern California at 5 Eastern time, preceded by international skating stars from the Garden, including Janet Lynn, Dorothy Hamill, Gordy McKellen. And uh, the 1956 gold medal winner, Dr. Tenley Albright, with a surprise. With a surprise? Yes, you tune in and watch it. Okay. Dick Button and I had the pleasure of doing it. All right, Howie Williams and Bob Woodcap are set away on a fourth round of 17. Just a few seconds, four to go. Army has not scored in seven quarters against Navy in this Army-Navy game. There's one that's getting snow on it. It's coming down. It's up for grabs. It's in the end zone in. No one has it. Woodcock covered it, but it bounced around off helmets, hands, and ground. And so, time has run out in the Diamond Anniversary Game of a classic that began in 1890 when they played two 45-minute periods. President Gerald Ford, watching first on the Navy side, at halftime moved over on the Army side, and the game has ended. It is a Navy victory again, and they retain the Commander-in-Chief Trophy, 19 and nothing. So there you see the happy midshipmen, the brigade of midshipmen from Annapolis, and in two years in a row, they have shut out the cadets of Army. Once again, the final score, Navy 19, Army nothing. Coming up, the Provincial College Scoreboard Show. Travel arrangements made through in a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. Here's a new spirit, a new look in the friendly skies. Catch the spirit of friendship service. The preceding was a presentation of ABC Sports recognized around.